want to thank Rabbi Yosef Yafi, want to thank her any time, Kavashkacha Proteus, Kalaloshin. Now, it's Elo. I recommend, I, I once heard a tremendous amount of schmoozing about Elo. And the bottom line of the whole, the number one schmooze was to be machshiv el. You have to be machshiv and realize it's el. You give something, shivas, you get something. If there weren't, says the rat, they weren't. They didn't make a bracha on Torah. It means you're not machshav Torah. Torah's not going to help you. If you are not machshav a person, you're not getting mileage out of them. When you tell somebody he's a great person, he, he does things for you. You're not machshav somebody, you lost them. The same thing with yourself. If you're not machshav yourself, you're not getting the mileage that you can from yourself. You don't know who you are. You're not much of yourself. You don't know who you're dealing with. So you don't respond accordingly. They tell the, the marshal, the guy sitting on a treasure chest, it's in his own house. He sits on a bench with his wife all his life. They sit together in their own backyard and they're both starving. They have no money. They don't hop that they're sitting on a treasure chest. After they pass away, the kids discover it. They see how the parents sat quenching all their lives, sitting on a treasure chest. It was right under them. They didn't chop. And they didn't realize a person who doesn't chop who he is. He doesn't sit on himself and chop his own greatness. Whenever Mandel tells him, I think you're the best guy in the world, Mandel's trying to make me feel good. Uh, you say that to everybody. You don't just do that to me, you do that to all praises. People are like that. It goes over the head so they don't take it serious. When you machshiv something, you have it. You're not machshiv, it's like sitting on a treasure chest that's, you're sitting all your life kvetching with your wife on a bench in your own backyard about your Aeneas Nebuch. And you don't realize that you're sitting on top of a gold mine. You're a millionaire. You don't realize it. That is the person who spends his life not being aware of his milus. Now, what I recommend to get those milus straight is to lie because you don't know who you really are. I was on the telephone with a wonderful person you talk to this person, it's not shy, and the person suffers. And everything around this person suffers, and this one suffering, their family, you know, this problem, that problem. And finally it came out. The person does not realize who they are. I sat down, I says, let's go. 100 miles, right here on the spot. And uh, half the miles, I said, well, this mile, I was born with it. It's not a real mile. I have it anyway. I don't deserve credit. Bye. Up your frack. It's not worth anything. Yay, Tora! You know, the mile, it looks like that on the outside, but inside it's really different. Next. The other mile, it's unbelievable how people spend their lives not being aware of who they are. Says Rabbi David Blacha, most people spend their lives busy with the envy that they have for the guy. Their brain is cluttered with all the impressions the outside world is giving them. This guy got see the Gedushin, and not me. They don't vocalize, not me. But when they tell their friends, oh, you know we got see the Gedushin? They're thinking, and not me. Or oh, he got a bracha under the chabot. This guy got this keyboard, this guy got, oh, he's, Baruch Hashem has this, and Baruch Hashem has that, and deep down you're saying, I don't. Because you're focusing your life on other people and not on yourself.
You don't look at yourself. Somebody who knew the altar from the Vardag remarked about him. He was totally involved in himself. What does that mean? It doesn't mean he was an ego type of person, but that's what it means, the way I understand it. Sit on yourself and chaza who you are. Such diamonds being lost every minute because people do not sit on it. They admire and adore all these other people. They'll read stories of Dalem and they're a bucky and all the stories of this guttle and that guttle. When I had a story about yourself, they don themselves like kaf chayv, chas v'shalom. You don't realize how unhealthy that is, but we all do it. So again, so you got the late nishbar, Baruch Hashem. Nothing wrong. Um, plenty wrong. Not like atchila, but if you're doing it, say, I like the way it is. So I'm a late nishbar. So what? Now, did I mention that this vad, the story of the Rebbeinus and Steif in Auschwitz? Did I? I didn't? Okay. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. I said it? Okay. Now, You want to be, uh, All right, I'll say quickly. He was a, his daughter was supposed to be 100 years old. His daughter was a 12-year-old girl in Auschwitz. You couldn't get out of Auschwitz. I did hear from an eyewitness. There were people who jumped on those electric wire fences to kill themselves because of the pain that they were going through was way too much for them. It was only proof to them. I knew a yid, his name was Rav Spitzer Zatzal, a Robin Farakaway, big tzaddik. He learned, he's from Munkach, tired of yid. He mentioned, he said, he wouldn't get near that. He had betachen. He said, that you can't do. Can't kill yourself. But anyway, his daughter comes over to him and says, Ta, I can't hold out. I don't know what she was ready to do, but she, she was giving up. And her father said, don't talk like that. And keep saying, we're getting out, we're getting out, say it day and night. Yeah, but talking. It was Friday when he said it. He, he told her on the spot, next Friday we're leaving. Next Friday they left together with 300 other people. How did that happen? It's impossible to leave. Now these vicious dogs were trained to do who knows what. And the Nazis themselves were patrolling, looking for an excuse to torture people to death. They were looking for it. You can't try. Don't even dare try to get out of that place. It's not happening. And they all got out. How did that happen? Because the Mechab of Eismanel Zatzal had made deals with them. Spoke to Dr. Mengele, Yemach Shemay. And he said, I gave you money to get some Jews out of there. And I'm supposed to give a second, a second, a second, couple of dollars, whatever he was giving him, he says, well, no one went out, I'm not giving you, ah, 300 Jews left that Friday. That's our Anderson Stipe, his wife and his daughter got out. How did that happen? He told his daughter, keep saying all day, we're getting out, we're getting out, everything's fine, everything's fine. It came true. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable story. Don't ask me. Now I'll tell you something about making the time. I would say, I'm going to tell you a story through a blind crane's that's all. He told this to me. He, a younger man comes over to him, tells him, I have no parnosa, I have no shalabais, and I have no children. What should I do? So he told him, he told me the story himself. Take Chavis above a shower, but talk him for one hour a day and learn it good. Now, he showed him how to learn it that the hour of Betachen should spill over to fill his mind up with Betachen thoughts throughout the day. You do that for a year, and you'll get everything. Three months later, the man comes over to him. I did what you told me. 
I have Shalom Bayes, my wife is pregnant, and I have a job. He told me the story himself. Now, why did he tell him a year? And what happened after three months? The way I see it, it takes time. You don't chop that betacha needs chazara. You have to chazar over those same thoughts. Now, by the way, very often, it doesn't mean a thing to you, those thoughts. You just have to go over, chazar the thoughts, even though you don't feel anything. Keep chazaring those positive thoughts. Keep chazaring. See yourself with your Yeshua. Chazarit, 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 chazarit. After a while, the chazarit kicks in. You feel it, and you got it. I say, in our time, our day and age, and I check this with my rabbeim, of course, even if you had no hargish at all that you're getting your Yeshua, it's going to work because you gave time to Betach. That's what I say. My Rebbe agreed a million percent. Not only that, in the body, he just open up, the, open up Shar Betach and Yeshua's happening as you open it up. Now, you got angry yesterday, right? You know what Abdullah Blacha says? You're working at Kass? Make believe that they're looking at you. They made a bet. If he gets in Kass, whatever, you'll get money like they did to Hillel. Or make believe they're watching you. And they're going to try to get you angry. And they're going to do all kinds of shtick to get you upset. Because they, they're trying to get you angry. If you know that it's a shtick and they're trying, two guys are trying to get you angry, the more they do it, the more you're going to laugh. Because you know it's just a shtick. And that's the way a person has to feel about all the Nesianists. They're trying to rate you on and don't fall for it. Now sometimes people, I just saw Rabbi Yashiv Sefer. This is a Mem Gimel and Saita. Mem Zayn, around there. He says, now people are going to go through Hello. How do you look at yourself? You know, Rabbi Yisraeli tells us that in Chela Gimel Shir Das that you are going to write yourself in Sefer Achaim. Put yourself down. I'm going to make it this year. You do it. Set B'Shem Nechzidim. See them say, do it to yourself. I decided I'm Zechim Batin. It's before the Shulchan Aruch that you have a Tachan that you're going to make it. Do it to yourself. Decide, I'm going to make it. Have a talk and a yid puts on white clothes when he, when he has, when he goes to court. Not like the guy. What? That's true. Dalma Russian. But he says, we put on white clothes because we're sure we're going to make it. A yid has to have a talk. Somebody called me up that they had a child that couldn't get into a, a school. And uh, everything was closed. And the child was not getting into the school for no money. And I said, they made so many phone calls and they made themselves crazy and called it. I says, enough for weeks. And the doors are locked. And I said like this, you're going to spend the next few days doing zero. Don't make any phone calls. Make believe you don't have a problem. Sit back. Do you know that the concern we got to get in is not so healthy for the situation? The concern, got to get married. Not so, not so push it. The more 
Why isn't he getting married? He's already whatever. Or she. Oy, oy, oy. That is not good. However, if you can't help it, and you're all stressed, and you can't listen to Mandel who says, chill out, then it is good. Look at all the pain you're going through. Hashem has to help you. But it's a chazal. Of Atana had Chalisha Sadas when they were asking for rain. As soon as he had Chalisha Sadas, they got rain. Chalisha Sadas does not mean betachen. That's why I'm always putting in a plug for, always I say, with the symbol, all that stuff, but I say, if you don't, Leib Nishbar. That's also good. Here you go, it's up in a Gemara. Gemara says, who's the Chalisha Sadas? Rain started coming. I had that. I had that plenty. I have on record, I once had a physical problem, and it says, Abishta, I can't. I, I, it hurt me. Boom! I had Nisim Galuyim. Because I, it was a true tefillah with a broken heart. It works! But I don't recommend Lechat Chila to go that way. Because some people do that all, all day long. And that's exactly the problem. You don't have any, you're not happy. It's not always good. Sometimes it is. I'm not, I don't run this world. The Abish is in charge. But I told this, this, uh, this parent, you're trying to get your child into a school and everything's closed. You're taking a break. You're doing zero. Sit back. And say, hey, mister, you're taking over. Now, I, I don't, they took it to an extreme. I, I didn't tell them to go to that extreme. I don't remember. Maybe I did. But when they got back to me, they told me that what they did was they, um, they said goodbye. Mandel said, chill out. We're going to be chilled. They did zero. People called them up with, Maybe we'll get, maybe let's try this, maybe. No, no, no. Goodbye. We were busy with the for weeks already. No more. Mandel said, we're going straight to the boss. We're doing zero. In three days, a mic has happened. Somebody backed out. I have a lot of those. Somebody backed out and the child is in. And the one who runs the whole Maisid swore them to secrecy that nobody should ever find out what just happened. Because if they have, because if something very unusual happened that they should get in because there could be, there's a hundred other people who have complaints. I don't know. But there was sworn to secrecy by an Olam Gadol, a very famous person who was involved with that Maisid. Don't you ever say anything to nobody. That's a story. They did nothing for three days. And things happen. A lot of people don't get what they want because the betachen. I had so much betachen. I was working on betachen, working on betachen. That's the problem. You're all stressed out with your betachen. Eat your pickles and stop with this betachen business. And I work, and I work so much on betachen. Go do nothing. Now I'm going to ask the yellow to do me a big favor. I was on the phone call today. I'm not even going to. Usually I try to cover up. This person called me from Mercer Israel. And this is a tough one. This is a super tough situation that's been going on forever. And this person got Haftachas from all the G'daylam. And all the Haftachas went nowhere. The person is going through Sheva Madure Gehenna. I can't describe what this person is going through. And the person is on the phone with me, a person from Eretz Yisrael. And I'm asking the Elam. I, as soon as I walked away, I says, Eivishter, they ain't scaring me. I asked this, but how much better do you feel? I spent more time than usual. Because I saw I was talking to, to beyond hopeless, you know, something that's really horrible. And after a few minutes, 10 minutes of talking, how much better do you feel from 1 to 10? So first I got a two, and the, well, before I left over it was three, which is gold for you if you know what you're dealing with. But that's not for me. I want ten. I want twelve. I want. Yeah, I, I want the Elam to have a mind. 
I have a, I have a special issue with that person. They're not the only ones. Uh, you know how many lost cases call me up? You know how many cases that are beyond help? And I, I, you know how many get better? They're all over the place. But this one, even me, who's so positive, felt, uh-oh, that you finally got a case that's... But someone else called me up, you got to speak to this person. Don't ask what's going on. I'm asking the Yalem to have a mind. I'll take you. This person is getting out of the woods. I believe this person is suffering for eight years of Sheva Maduri Gehenna Shemira. And I say, no more. And I mean business. I am not impressed. They're calling me t- tomorrow. I got to call them. I don't know what happened. It's totally gone. That's where we're heading. Who's Moscow? Give me a bracha. The whole oil I'm here. Whoever's listening. I mean business. I'm a tamim. They got brachas from every God will be Israel. And the, 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 all the Gdolim sound just like me. They sound just like me. They all say, you're Yisurim, I'm a chapra, the whole world. Mamish, we all have the same nusach. And, but from now on, the Yisurim are stopping. They all sounded like me. And I said, look, by me, it's real. I'm different. By me, it's going to happen. Not with me. I'm different. I'm a tummin. I'm too stupid to, to say, well, it doesn't always work. Not with me. It always works. Forget it. Mandel bet the Abish that gives. There's no husband. Maybe the person has to suffer. No, 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 no. Maybe there's, no, it's a lost case, the type of person. I always sense that, you know. Very often, you're speaking to people that are in a mode that they can't pull out. They're sort of, they're so sunk in there. You get the feeling that they're fighting you. I once heard this. I don't like it at all. I'm not curious. I heard it from a very stark chesidish from the, the best people I know. They said, you're dabbing for the guy, and he doesn't even want the fillers to work. He's so stuck in his mode that he, he's detrimental to himself. I don't like that stuff. Not with me. I don't care what the guy's thinking. I want him out. He's coming out, whether he likes it or not. I do not believe in any of that stuff. All that stuff is kvita. It means you believe there's a kayak outside. I say out is out. I say the person's going to change. Once out of my son, where a woman was sick with Yanamachla, and the kids were davening their heads off, and the woman was going nowhere. She used to walk around with pipes all over the place, Shrekel Hamatza. A nervous lady, understandable, but could be she was nervous before. This is probably, which was, and I says, the reason why this person, and the kids were davening and davening, person's going down, till Mandel got on the scene. Mandel said, stop davening, your mother should get better. Daven, your mother should stop being a nervous wreck. Because that's the reason why she's sick. And they, it seemed they related to that. Because kids suffer when they have a nervous wreck for a mother. And the, um, I think one Shabbos is all was needed. They, I have a way of doing it. If anybody ever needs, they all got together, they have a whole mahalach that has to work. And two weeks later, she was out of the woods. She lived happily ever after. She was dying away because they davened not up for the refuah like they used to. They davened for the nervous disposition that caused the problem in the first place. How's that one? So some people you can't help because there's a certain mode. So I daven for the mode. How's that? Get get rid of the mode. No more, to, no more of this mode. Anyway. Says Rabbi Yashif, of Mem Gimel Mem Zayin and Saita. People are knocking themselves all the time. 
I, I speak to people to build them up. Ah, I don't do that L'shem Shemayim. I do that for covet. I said, that's what I do all the time. What's your problem? What's wrong with looking for covet? Listen to this one. Yeah, but it's not really, it's not a Mila. Rabbi Yashiv says that Balak brought 42 karbanas. And before, because it, he brought 42 karbanas, sh- now the Gemara says, Shadu, Shaloi Lishma, Tashalashma, Balishma. So for the Gemara, it's Mashma. That the reason you're doing Shaloi is because someday you'll be Lishma. So Rabbi Yashiv, uh uh-uh. look at the Raya. The Raya is Balak. Bullock never became Lishma. You know why he brought 42 Karbanas to bury Klai Yisrael? He wanted to become Lishma? <laughs> Lashem burying us. I mean, he wasn't, he, was, he didn't have a nice bone in his body. Bullock was in Russia. And the Gemara brings him as a proof that you should always do Shalom Lishma because, because he did that. He had a son. His son's name was Eglon Melech Mayav. He had a granddaughter, Rus. He had a great great grandson, Shlaima, and David Amalek Rachi Ids. And Shlaima Amalek brought a thousand Kabanas. He brought Kabanas to Enigha. He was rewarded. And he had a Rus with a Shlaima who brought Kabanas. And that's for being Shalai Lishma. So it says Rabbi Yashib, see from this Gemara, that if you do a mitzvah, that's L'shalei L'shma, and it's never going to be L'shma, and I want to add, you don't even want it to be L'shma. You're going to get a schus because you still did a mitzvah. How's that? Makes life easy, no? Ratzah Kodesh Baruch Hu Lezaki says Yisrael, I had a dick in Yosef HaTzadik. It's terrible. How can you talk like that about Yosef HaTzadik? Rashi says, that Yosef HaTzadik was a salsa basarai. A young, good-looking Yosef HaTzadik was a salsa basarai, and there he's living in a house together with mit- Mitzri ladies, and there he goes. And Rashi says that it was an abla, that his father was crying for him, and he's having a good time with the salsa basarai. But the Pashup Shad, I would say, more than that. You don't do that in such and such. There's a Chazal. You see a Bacha puts on these fancy glasses. A Bacha. And he puts on a nice, with the cufflinks, starts, shirt, gold watch, nice golden cufflinks, and a tie that's, that's knacks. He walks in the room, everybody got to hold his eyes. It looks like the sun is glaring in his face. And the guy smells like, he smells like he just came out of a perfume shop. And the guy smells and his, his shoes are shined. You can see your face inside the guy's shoes. He's, he looks like a, a real dandy guy. A dude, what did he call such a guy? With his hair, <laughs> he goes ahead and he has, you know, uh, in, in, the Hungarians didn't like that stuff. A frizur, a chup, yes, I remember a chup, you know the Hungarian? Frizur. He's got his frizur, oh, they hated that. In Hungary, a frizur. So this kid found a tefillin, you know, he's going with sugar. Frizur, frizur, he's got a nice frizur, a big one. A big frizur and it combed uh, with a couple of waves. He's got a nice small yarmulke in the back that you can barely see it. Are you there? Anybody home? Oh, there's a yarmulke there. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know. I see a lot of hair. Boy, he looks. And he dresses up like he's a snazzy guy. He puts taps underneath his shoes and he walks in the street. And when he comes, you know. And he's got a nice smile. He takes out a cigarette. He has one of those, you know, what do they call cherry flavored? Uh, what do they call? What? what? Who? They have. There's a certain type of. 
it's, it's a cigar, a cigar, a, a mini cigar. Cigarello. You get a cigarello. You take a puff and it's cherry flavored. And it's long. And he, got, and he knows how to make rings. The guy's good. He knows how to make rings. And he goes, He's, this guy's cool. This guy's a Harry Shema Harry's. He is one of the chief Harry's of the club. He's, he's a Harry. There's Machleikin. What Madrega of an American do you become an official Harry? No one ever called me a Harry because I'm one of the old guys, you know. I joke around, but I'm not a Harry. You got to have a get much more cool to be a Harry, uh, Harry Mandel. You can't, you know, they got to match, you know, things got to match. You got to be, you know, you got to smell a little bit like you just came out of a perfume shop. Yeah. Rob Miller says, I see the Bachuri Yisrael. Someday the Bachurim of Kaisel will smell like um, Arzi Alavani. You know, cedar trees smell delicious. You know that. Um, I see them not today. The Yeshiva Bachurim aren't into smelling good. They're not into that. <laughs> Rabbi Miller says about ladies, I don't know what context he was. Some ladies were a little too talkative to, with their husbands. I don't remember what he said, but he, he said something like, keep quiet and smell good. That's all you got to do in life. You know, if a lady's a passes, but a man with perfume, how did you get into that? I'm one of those. So in walks the Harry, and he looks like he owns the world with cigarello done, whatever it's called, puffing with his cherry flavored. Says Chazal on him that the Yatara says, Zesheli, this guy's mine, I got him. He's dead. He going around like that? Watch, I'll do a job on him. You walk like that, you're risking for trouble. So you're not supposed to do that. There's a famous story that uh, the son of a rub went like that. Not like this guy. But he has gekrazzled the pious were a little too gekrazzled. He had, he used to look in the mirror to check him every morning. He was a big time chacham. He was a good kid. But he was into that, you know. For whatever reason, he had a weakness. He was human. He wasn't perfect. Gekrazzled and he, I don't know exactly what it looked like, but he, he was into that to look good, and he fell into a serious problem. A princess, the, the princess saw him. And that, that was the end. Boy, did he get into trouble. He almost lost his life. It's a famous story. Well, you know the story? She, she, met, she wanted to marry him, and I said like this, middle of the night. So somebody, she saw him, and that's it. And she realized he's Jewish. You're not going anywhere with him. He'd marry the, a, a Jewish boy. To him, a princess. Ask Rabbi Miller what a princess meant to a Jewish boy. If a princess got near him, he'd have serious issues. He'd be vomiting because of the... A Jewish princess was like... Rahman al Like, it was like... He couldn't look. He couldn't. He couldn't look not for other reasons. Now it's kedusha. A guy, whatever. That that's the way they used to be. By the way, they're yidden today like that too. It's interesting. They can't be civil. There's, they don't have kedusha problems with with Gaisha women. I promise you. I have several young like coming out to me. A Gaisha woman. There's no kedusha problem. I mean, they 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 watch themselves, but they, they don't really have an issue. They have a different issue. Where do you vomit first? Have the hacking a gaisha shiksa shem Anyway, Rabbi Miller speaks about that. So this guy, he saw that he saw the. Uh, uh, yeah, so she saw him. She wanted to marry him. She got sick because she knew she couldn't get him. And the king found out that the doctor checked her out. Why is she sick? They found out. The doctor said, he made a meeting. If the boy's married, you got to leave him alone. If he's not married, 
he better marry my daughter or else he's going to be hanging. It's, it's a bazillion not to marry the princess. So somebody who was at the meeting at 3 o'clock in the morning, the meeting took place, and they said 6 o'clock in the morning. We're going to be banging at the door. The king's um, messenger, is your son married, rabbi? If he's not married, let's go. You marrying her or you're hanging? If he's married, leave him alone. So somebody was there who liked the rabbi. I was best friends with him. And he was a guy. And he was at the meeting. And while it was taking place, he smelled where it's heading. He quickly backed out. He, he disappeared. And he jumped on a horse. And he started going emergency to the rub's house. He knocked on the door at 3 in the morning. He says, Rabbi, you got a serious problem. Get that boy married now. <laughs> Get him married now. So they started the whole town. They woke up. Who's ready to marry him? And nobody really wanted him because you don't get married like this. Let's check him out. He's a rough son. We know he's a good boy, but just like this in a second. So they found this Nebuch, this poor, this Nebuch girl, a Jewish girl, who was in the Hectish. That's a place with the, with the poor people. She was the assignment that but she lost her father, lost her family, and she had to go collecting. A poor Nebuch girl. So no one wanted to get near the boy, even though normally, yeah, it takes time. It's got to be on the spot. And she had it was a dream, and her father came to her. And she, she thought she'll never get married because she was never going around barefoot with no, with no nothing, with rags, with no food. She was a never case. So you say, Mala. And after the door, and would you marry him? Nah, I just got a dream. That's my shidduch. She comes, she'd marry him. The next morning, a few hours later, knocked on the door. Your son married? Yes. They made a chuppah right there with her, and he was forced. It was a whole story. Then, they, then they, all the Yidinists started complaining about her. This is not really a shidduch for the Rav's son. It was an emergency chasana. So, so she got a divorce. This is no good. And she was in action. She says, I am not divorcing. And she stuck it out. And the Rav said, every, all the Yidinists were babbling and talking, besmirching her, she's no good, she's this, they better get divorced, that type of stuff, from a sugar. And, but she was an auction, auction yatsliach. She says, no, sir, I, if you divorce me, now I'm finished for life. She stayed, and she turned out to be very chashiv, and she had a lot of twins, she had, it's a whole, you heard the story? It's a, that's a story. Anyway, when do I have to start with, with the, Tumim, that's right. That's a film. No questions? This is it? Where am I? This thing here? I got this. This I got to do? Or this? I think I've done them all. No? Oh, this. Okay, we go.